All right, well, I just wanted to make another educational video. Um, so uh, I guess I'll just start with yesterday and just a quick story. Um, my, uh, I was having problems with the, um, the cathine. Uh, if you're not familiar with cathine, you, you ram a tube down. Uh, it's a lot more difficult for women than it is for men. And uh, you get it to your bladder and then you drain your bladder and then you pull that sucker out and not trying to gross you out, but uh, um, so anyway, I kept feeling like I had to pee all the time and uh, I called my, by the way, if you're ever in my situation, I had a, um, a primary care doctor appointment after I got booted out of uh, the rehab center to my hotel room here. And uh, I didn't understand what it was about, but, Please, God, make that, however you got to do it, make that primary care appointment. Uh, it's just a temporary primary care doctor that's representing me here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, and man, I tell you what, they have gone to bat for me. You know, thank God for them. And here's, here's, a, here's one for you. This is called uh, N-I-T-R-O-F-U-R-A-N-T-O-I-N. Uh, anyway, this is an antibiotic. So I called him up and I described my problem and I was running a fever at the time, about 99 to 100. And immediately they knew uh, urinary tract infection and they ordered up this prescription, but how do I get the prescription? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just, I mean, it's at CVS Pharmacy, which is a half mile away, you know, and I couldn't walk it because I was too sick from a urinary tract infection. So anyway, my real estate agent had to come here. Uh, my mom's house is sold. The closing is happening on the 11th. Um, that's good, you know. And so I asked her, I said, you know, can you give me a ride over to the pharmacy? And uh, and she did it, but I didn't know. I mean, there was some major thunderstorms coming through and I got soaked. Uh, well, the way the pharmacy is, there's stairs in the back. Um, it's downtown Charlottesville here. And then you, but there's a walkway that goes up and then you can come in the front of the pharmacy. And I probably could have climbed the stairs. I was feeling pretty good, but I thought, you know what? I had, I just am kind of scared of stairs at the moment. I mean, that's how I broke my neck. So I went around to the front of the pharmacy and I went in and unfortunately there was a line of people because I guess the storms, you know, everybody was running in there to get their prescriptions before the storms hit. And man, did they hit, holy moly. It took me about 20 minutes to get my my uh, antibiotic and uh, and so then you know she told me she said I'll, I'll be parked right here there was a parking lot in the back of the uh, pharmacy and a uh, funny story so I I had a guy he helped me down the stairs he was a paramedic and he's you know made sure that I was stable and so we get down like three flights of stairs or whatever it was it's, it's crazy and uh, so I get out the, the there's an awning there and I mean it's pouring down lightning striking all around and I look around the corner, remember Bill Murray in the movie Stripes? I had a vehicle waiting here. <laughs> you know, that was exactly, so I'm looking and I'm like, oh, where did she go? You know, and, and it's, I mean, it is pouring down. I can't even see hardly around the corner, lightning striking everywhere, thunder, lightning. So I just was said, well, the only thing I can do is wait it out. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe I'll just try to walk back to my room. I, I didn't know where she went. Well, what she had done was she, pulled out of that parking lot, I don't know why, and she went up the alley where I walked up to get to the front door of the pharmacy because she thought I'd be coming back the same way because of the, um, uh, I don't know, I'm even, but I'm not going to go that way without a, I didn't even have an umbrella, you know, I didn't take my cell phone, that was a mistake, and, uh, and so she did call into the pharmacy, but she didn't leave her phone number, so I, you know, <laughs> It was crazy. Anyway, it took like uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And unfortunately, she had a, her son was waiting for her to, to come pick him up. And I felt bad about the whole thing. But anyway, she did bring me back to the hotel. And that's just one story of many, you know, about the stupid stuff that you go through without, you know, any sort of support. You're just on your own, you know. Um, by the way, I did call the nursing uh, place uh, today. And... I, you know, I, I, because I, well, well, let's let's get into today's story, and I just want to start from the beginning because once again, an educational experience. Um, I don't know what happened. I guess it's the urinary tract infection. Um, I've been told that, that you know the uh, antibiotics are kicking in, and so I, you know, it's just drained me. Uh, I have, I'm not running a fever at the moment, which is good, 
And uh, but but by kicking in, I mean you know your body's fighting off the uh, the infection, so it wiped me out this morning. And so I'm in there, you know I got a got a cath right away, um, and I uh, I'm getting all my equipment prepared and everything. And then all of a sudden the everything went black. I don't know if you've ever just been like hitting the head. Like I got one time I got hit in the head with a two by four that fell off a shelf, and that you know you get that. Beep, sound in your ears and everything goes black you can't see anything and that's exactly what happened to me and I don't know why if I'd leaned to the right the worst that would have happened was my head would have hit the wall but for some reason I just started going to the left and of course I can't I got no control and there's a trash can down below uh, that's a metal trash can that would have probably broke my neck again if I could continue going and uh, and and I it just I was I was so dizzy I couldn't see anything everything was black my ears are ringing and I just and I thought for sure I was either gonna hit the track well hit the trash can and fall into the floor and uh, why I lean left instead of right I don't know I mean looking back on it and uh, and I just I just I, I prayed to God and I said God please please don't let me hit the floor please don't let me hit the floor and uh, luckily that didn't happen. So that's how I started the day. <laughs> Hell of a start to the day, right? So then it goes on from there. So I, you know, I, I decided, uh, well, I, I don't, here's an education thing for you. So um, I, I, you know, I was looking at my bank accounts and because I'm, you know, I got a little bit of money from uh, the sale of all the furniture at my mom's house. And so I'm paying some bills that, because I'm racking up the bills here, you know, Uber driving around. By the way, I found out I can ride around for free. Can you believe that? The social worker at the hospital didn't know that. So now, well, at least I think I can. I haven't investigated it yet. I'll let you know in a pretty future video. So um, that'll save me a ton of money on Uber rides. And I still only got this ridiculous one shirt. I got one shirt that I've been wearing for two, well, since the 17th of June. Um, you know, you do the math. Anyway, where was I at? I was talking about it passed out. And oh, so I called the bank and I said, look, you know, why? I mean, because I found out my wife was the beneficiary on my life insurance. Uh, and and I said, well, wait a minute. My ex-wife, by the way, ex-wife. And I had taken her off uh, months ago. And, and so I'm thinking, you know, if I had broken my neck and died, my ex-wife and her stepdaughters would have gotten all of my life insurance. Now, it's only about $150,000, but I don't want it going to her. I wanted it to go to, like, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I've got some other ideas. I, I want to go from rails to trails, you know, because hiking's my shtick, and, you know, so I, I have yet to set all that stuff up, but I was like, I certainly didn't want it going to my ex-wife. So I called the bank. I was trying to figure out what was going on, and then, of course, I also wanted to transfer some money around, to some other accounts that I use for various things. And uh, and it, for some reason, well, you know, the bank that I use, I don't want to slander them, um, they had renovated their system and everything had reverted back to like years ago. I mean, I, I can say it because I'm not slandering them, but one of the accounts on the, uh, um, you know, where I could transfer money to was Dearborn Financial. I haven't done business with Dearborn Financial in four years. I closed that account five years ago and I deleted it from from my bank, and I called him, I said, well, why is Dearborn Financial back? I, oh, you don't know, you know, I said, well, let's delete that, man. I said, I, I, but anyway, I'm working through that, and then I said, well, you know, I, I got the question, I said, why was my wife the beneficiary of my life insurance? I said, I deleted all of that, and so I ended up getting through to them. What it was, was I left it blank at the time, because I did not know how to, because you got to get the tax ID, you got to get all the information, and I didn't know how to get that. I, In fact, I still don't have it right. I, I, I just, went on online and it could have been a, a bogus site or a, uh, a who knows i might be giving it to some oligarch in in russia you know for all i know but i just put all the leukemia and lymphoma society into the life insurance hoping i've got the right information at least it specifies the leukemia and lymphoma society in the name only um i don't know whether the other information is correct so i called leukemia and lymphoma society and i said look i just want to verify this information um, well, we don't, I mean, we'll, we'll call it, you know, left a phone number. I said, well, look, man, I would think that your donations would be like one of the most important things that you want to deal with. They never called me back today. So, you know, I'm kind of winding down and I had some other things that I was working on. Uh, 
um, later on in, in, in the day with, with bank accounts, moving money around, paying bills. And, uh, and then the knock, knock, knock on the door and they said, housekeeping? And I said, yeah. They said, well, we need to clean your room because you're checking out today. So what are you talking about? I said, I'm not checking out today. I got, you know, I got uh, medical supplies that are supposed to come. I got some more catheters and I got some more diapers coming. Uh, that's all in the works. Um, I've got an order, a couple orders from Amazon. I bought some shorts. You know, I've only got two pair of shorts right now. So I ordered a couple pair from Amazon and uh, boy, I had to return. I ordered extra large. Turns out uh, I needed uh, large. So those are going back. I got, uh, I've already ordered food. I got food in the fridge enough to last me, uh, maybe, cause I gotta stay here till July 6th. July 6th is when I see the uh, surgeons. They're gonna take a bunch of x-rays of my neck and then they're gonna determine if the, the collar can come off. And, I, and then I'll be able to drive home to Florida in my, in my car, hopefully. Or, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. I don't know. I mean, we gotta wait till that appointment and see. So I'm stuck in the hotel room, which is good because, you know, it's given me some time to, to work out and, you know, but I didn't understand. So getting back to the nurses, um, so I called them because I was desperate. I was, I said, so now I'm getting kicked out of my hotel room. So I'm calling everybody. I'm call I, and I told them, I said, well, you're going to have to drag me out of here. You know, just like a renter. You know, I said, I'm, 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 I, but it, unlike a renter, I've paid my rent, you know, and, and I said, I said, the deal was, is that, you were going to let me know, uh, ask me if I was going to renew the room. Uh, that's how, where we left it because I thought the social worker at UVA, that's what she told me. She said, and, and I just kind of forgot about it because uh, I only paid for one week up front. I understand where they're coming from. Um, but, I, you know, and I told her, I said, I can't leave the room. I got my medication sitting over here. I got my catheter supplies in the bathroom. You know, I've got everything laid out. I got my food in the fridge. You know, I mean, like, like I said, it's a damn nice room at a pretty reasonable price, you know, continental breakfast. I said, no way. I said, you're gonna have to drag me out. And I said, I'm calling Channel 4 News. And I said, I'm gonna have them out here when you roll, because I have to roll out in a wheelchair. I can't, I can't even use the walker at this point. And I said, you know, and I said, I'm gonna make sure they're out there with cameras showing what you do to handicap people. Anyway, they, that pissed them off and, you know, and, and went around. I, so the, by the way, the nurses, the reason why I haven't had a nurse visit me in the room is, UVA, well, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be, I'm not trying to slander them, but the, the social worker there gave them the wrong phone number. So they, 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 they've they been calling the wrong phone number for a week saying that I haven't been returning their calls. I said, well, I, nobody's called me. I said, I check my messages every day. And, uh, and she, she goes, well, I said, what number you got? And of course it was the wrong number. And I, I said, well, they gave you the wrong, I said, you'd think they would realize it was the wrong number because, well, maybe the other person never answered the phone, but it, it could have been voicemail and it probably didn't say my name. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how these things happen. And of course, I haven't even heard from physical therapy, which is fine by me. I'm doing well when I'm not sick, but like I am right now, I do my own physical therapy. You know, I'm trying to, but the thing is, I need some questions answered. Like, can I do crunches? You know, I mean, especially, you know, and by the way, that's another good thing about having your primary care physician, because I got I want to go in for an ultrasound to see if there is water above the liver, and then maybe I have to get another paracentesis. And that just means they're going to stick a needle in my side and drain me one more time. Hopefully that'll be it, because now that I'm exercising, uh, you know, I'm, I think that that situation will be resolved. So um, that's good. Um, so not, not another reason to have that primary care physician, because that, that means I don't have to go through the emergency room. They're just going to send me straight to radiology, and I think it's radiology and something. Okay, so, so I'm in this huge battle to stay in the room. This goes on for like two, two and a half hours, and finally they come in and they say, well, we're, we'll keep you in the room till Monday. I said, well, what happens after Monday? I said, I'm back to the same situation. And she goes, well, you know, and I said, well, wait a minute. And I said, she goes, well, how long do you need the room for? I said, I need it till J July 7th. And she goes, oh, well, I, we can go ahead and reserve it through the 7th. I said, well, yeah. I mean, go ahead. I mean, go ahead and put it, put the reservation through the seventh. I mean, why is this like rocket science? You know, I mean, because they were just going to boot me out on Monday. You know, I, I you know, I tell you, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, how the, the, the how everything dissolves in the case. Now, in the meantime, I'm sick as a dog. All I want to do is get in the bed after Kathin and taking my medication so that I can get some rest. So that ends all of that. You know. Um, then, then, you know, I, I, I was trying, I, I got a transfer, I'm trying to get things ready for me to get back to Florida, so 
I said, well, now I'm wide awake. I can't, you know, I'm all wound up. I'm, I'm stressed out. You know, no way I could get any sleep. So I said, well, I might as well take care of this, this my credit union down in Florida. Because when I log in, it's not showing anything. I don't, I don't even see a balance in my account. I don't know what happened to my account. I mean, maybe they closed it. It's been eight months since I even logged into the account because I've been up in Virginia. So I call them up and, you know, it turns out I was logging into the old account. And I'm like, well, why is there a login for my old account? Because when I got, this is another thing that, you know, I stressed to you guys. When you get divorced, um, don't make sure you, well, when you get married, don't put your wife joint on your accounts. Because she was joint on my Florida account, I had to close the old account and open a new account. Well, in my password file, all I had here when traveling, because I haven't been traveling since then, because I have just went through the divorce, it just divorce finalized in April, um, I had the old login. And I don't know why the old login still would let me log in. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, can't you delete the login? I mean, that's a security hazard, you know? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that for you. I said, I said, what about the new account? So I had to set up a whole new login remotely to the new account. I just had them hang on the phone and walk me through it. Um, so now I got to log into the new account. But once again, the, the account they have at my other bank is the wrong damn account. It's the old account. <laughs> oh my God damn. <laughs> How much more shit do I have to go through in a single day, you know? Oh my God. And it just, it just went on from there. Uh, I, I'm going to wind this uh, video up, but I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to educate you on the on the, the crap you're going to run into. So I guess the moral of the story is, uh, if, if, if you know, make sure that if you if you're in the in the bathroom sitting down, that you got a plan of action that if you blank out, that that you're going to lean to the right instead of the left. You know, I mean, have that in the back of your mind. I think if I just somewhere we had a brain cell that thought. You know, you're passing out, go to the right, you know, rather than the left. And then uh, the, the second moral of the story was, you know, if you're in a hotel, you know, by the way, an, another quick story for you, just talking about hotels. I mean, of course, the moral of the story here was renew the room ahead of time when you know that you're going to be here for a lot longer. Because, you know, at first the reservation was for the 20th and or the, the, the appointment. And there's no way I was staying in the hotel room. That's why we only booked one week because the, um, uh, the uh, rehab facility, they said, well, let us see if we can move your appointment up to an earlier date and just, just stay here in Charlottesville and give it a week. And that's why we only put it into a week. But moral of that story is make sure you, you got your room reserved for the duration that you're gonna be here. Because once I found out that, that the, uh, the appointment was on the 6th, because um, I was trying to get to the VA, uh, the VA told me, they said, look, you're in the UVA system, stay there and, and make the 6th of July appointment and then see what they say because it, it's kind of like being in prison, right? Uh, you need them to release you so that then you can move on to another medical system. Like So, so I need UVA to release me. It makes it a lot simpler for me to then be indoctrinated into the, the VA system even though, you know, I've got healthcare through the VA. It's just the paperwork and everything becomes a lot easier. I, I guess it's the same with the prison, you know, you, you, you wait till you, you know, you, you get discharged and then you're out of the system, you know. Uh, of course, I guess you get probation maybe at that point, but some of them I, I guess don't, I don't know. Uh, I've only stayed a few nights in jail. Um, so, um, oh, the other story was the, just the opposite. When you check out, you know, make sure you check out. So like here, you know, I've got kind of a set date of the 7th and more than likely, you know, I could just go out and, you know, everything would be fine. But I remember when I was going to war in Iraq and me and my wife had the, my ex-wife, excuse me, had the honeymoon suite. And uh, I got this huge bill when I was over in Kuwait and I didn't know what it was all about. Well, my wife didn't check us out <laughs> in the hotel room. So they didn't know we weren't in there, you know. They didn't want to disturb us, so they charged me for like a week. Because uh, my wife, you know, because we only got two nights before I had to ship out. But since she didn't check us out, they, they billed me for a whole week because the room was empty for a week. They thought that I, we were still in there, you know. So I always check out. You know, that's my that's the moral of the story. I always make sure I get the receipt and say, Okay, we're done. Everything's in the computer. I'm checked out. So, 
All right, I guess that's it for the latest in the saga. Um, it just seems like every damn day, if she had left with the car and I had to walk back, there was another whole round. I mean, I sat here in the room and opened up the blinds and just watched the lightning come down. So I would have been walking back to the room in a thunderstorm and it would have been funny as hell because, you know, the guy broke his neck and now he's been struck by lightning. <laughs> you know, that, would have been, that would have been the story because I couldn't, I, with, the, with the urinary tract infection, I was, I was going to pass out right there at the damn uh, CVS pharmacy because I couldn't stand up for her. There was no place to sit. And it was dirty as hell. I think people have been peeing in that little uh, compartment area where I was trying to stay dry because it stunk pretty bad. All right, that's it, man. You guys, uh, well, let's do the mantra. You know, I'm just going to kind of freedom, oh, freedom, please, God, get me back to the free state of Florida. So imagine right now, you know, being in woke Charlottesville, they're probably out marching through the university uh, uh well, maybe down Black Lives Matter Boulevard, and uh, I hope they all got masks on. That you know, they better protect themselves because that'll be a huge crowd. And that that COVID virus, because every that's another thing. Every time you call any number in in Charlottesville, any anybody you talk to, they the the if, if you have a fever uh, and you feel that you might have COVID, I uh, doubt you know pick one or, you know, dial this number or dial 911, you know. So they're, they're still living the, the COVID thing. And, you know, in Florida, we just, nobody even thinks about it. I, I just, I just want to get back to the free state of Florida. That's it. Um, but by the way, I mean, I, I'll finish with this. I mean, now the Democrats are going crazy over the, the Roe versus Wade, and all it does is kick it back to the states. If you want to chop the head off your baby, I keep telling you this, you can just go to California. In fact, California is going to pay for your plane ride. You know, when the baby pops out the womb, I pull out a machete, chop its head off, and, and there you go. There's your abortion. I mean, what's the problem here? I mean, if you want to do that, I mean, it's all up to you. And then in New York, you can, you can abort it all the way up to the ninth trimester. And then the corporations, they're all saying that they're going to fly you to the states where you can have an abortion. You know, so if that's your thing, you want to chop the head off your own baby or just, you know, hit, pull it out at six months or two months or five months or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of Democrat states and cities with, with lots of abortion centers where you can go. I mean, I, I, I don't understand it. Why is, this, why is everybody protesting the fact that some Republican states are saying that, that they don't want abortion except under... Uh, certain circumstances. And, and hey, here's one for you. I found out because in, in Florida, it's up to 15 weeks that you can have an abortion. And uh, I, I heard it was on the news somewhere. Florida's one of the top states for abortions. Uh, I, I'm sure we're not ranked number one like California is, you know, I mean, but we're, we're, we're ahead of some of the Democrat states. Uh, so if you want an abortion, I mean, I guess it's pretty easy to get in Florida. Which surprises me, but that you know that's okay, you know. I mean, but but you're limited up to 15 weeks, and uh, that's that's just the, the law in Florida. So, all right, stay free. That's it.